Okay, this video we're going to just explain some of these checkpoints. So if you're struggling with any of these from the problems that you did last night, um, this is going to hopefully help clear some things up. So the first step, part A, wants us to list all possible rational zeros. So remember, we look at the coefficient of the leading power. So the coefficient of this one is 1. And we look at the values at the final constant term. We look at those different factors. And we divide the two. We take the co constant, the factors of the constant, which are possible factors are positive or negative 1, 2, 3, and 6. Those are the four different numbers, positives or negatives, that go into negative 6. Uh, we would end up dividing them by plus or minus 1. Well, that doesn't really change anything. So this is a list. I have a list of eight things that I'm going to test in order to find the zeros for part B. So in part B, we're going to find those zeros by testing these different values. So I'm going to test. You just try something and see if it works. So we're going to try 3. I'm going to see if 3 is a factor. So that's remember, that means I'm testing x minus 3. I'm essentially dividing this guy by x minus 3 to see if it's a nice even factor. I list my coefficients in synthetic division. And then I start by dropping, multiplying, adding. 5. 3 times 5 is 15. I've already sensed that I'm probably not going to work here. 3 times 10 is 30. And remember, you know that this is not a factor because you have a remainder. It should go an even number of times. So also remember that means that if I plugged in 3 into everything, I would get an answer of 24, which means it's not a 0. It should give me an answer of 0 if it doesn't factor. So we try something else. We erase this and we start over. Oh, but I try negative 3. Negative 3. 1, 2, negative 5, negative 6. Got the 1. 3, negative 3 times 1, negative 3. Negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Looking promising here. I'm going to get negative 2. And then negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6 gives me a remainder of 0. Okay, so so far we found one factor. The factor is x minus 3. That means that a factor is x plus 3. So because the negative 3 went into it synthetically, remember that means it's x minus negative 3. So that means I can factor it into x plus 3 times this polynomial that we see here. And remember we dropped the power once since it was to the third power. This would be x squared minus 1x, minus 2. So I have factored it into the following. But I want to see if I can factor further. Thankfully, now it's a quadratic. And factoring quadratics is always a little bit quicker. So I can factor this quadratic. And I'm going to just kind of factor that one in my head. Let's see, x minus 2 times x plus 1. x minus 2 because, let's see, we'd get negative, one, negative 2x, positive 1x, making my negative x, and then I would get negative 2 there. So these are the final two factors. So my final answer is the factors for this polynomial are x plus 3 from synthetic division, and then my other two, x minus 2 and x plus 1. That is my factored form. And that gives me my zeros. So my zeros occur at when x is negative 3, 2, and negative 1. Those are my three zeros for this function. So you're starting with thinking through the possible zeros, and then you're guessing and checking. You're trying one and checking it. So this one's interesting, number 2. Um, 13 is my constant. So that means my factors are plus or minus 13, or 1. The only numbers that go into 13, because 13 is prime. And then once again, this coefficient is 1 on the leading term. So I only really need to worry about these four. So that should make my life a little bit easier. So let's take a look at let's take a look at what we get here when we try these. So I'm going to try 1, negative 1, just because it's a little easier to work with. So let me let me give 1 a shot. 13 could try as well, but I think, I don't know, 1's faster. So we'll try 1. Okay, so we're dropping the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 5. 
1 times negative 5, that's negative 5. Adding, I get 17. Multiplying, I get 17. Adding, I get negative 13. And then lastly, multiplying, negative 13, and I get 0. Nice. So I found a factor is x minus 1. Remember, this is c, where the factor would be x minus c. Now, I have a factor, and then this guy right here is the polynomial. Once again, we drop the term, so this would be x to the third, x squared, x, and 1, so that would be plus. So right now, we have it factored like this. It never hurts to think through your possible factors again, just like you did in step A. So step A was to list the possible rational zeros. Well, if I look just at this polynomial, the only possible rational zeros, once again, are positive or negative 13 and positive or negative 1 because of that 13. So I'm going to test something easy again, like negative 1 or 1, because those definitely have to occur. So I'm going to try something again. I'm going to try and factor this guy. So 1, negative 5, 17, negative 13. And I'm going to try negative 1, see if that one works. The 1, multiply it, add it, and get 6, multiply it, and get 6, add it, 23, and it looks like it did not work, because I'm going to get negative 36. So this is not a factor, so I try another one. Um, remember, one key thing here to remember is that a multiple may occur twice, so while x minus 1 occurred once, it might occur again. So I tried again because it's easier than trying 13. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to try it with the 5x. So I'm going to put in the 1, this polynomial, negative 5, 17, and negative 13. And I'm going to test for the 1 again. Drop the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add multiply, and we get 0. So now this factor right here, this polynomial up here, can be factored further into another x minus 1 times this polynomial. We drop the power 1 again, and we get x squared minus 4x plus 13. So I've successfully factored it into two zeros. So remember what that means about your graph is that it's going to bounce at 1. It can come up twice. We can have up to 0 twice. And then this one, we still want to find the zeros. We're at a point where it's a quadratic. We already discovered negative 1 doesn't work. That means negative 1 won't work with this polynomial that you have down here either. Um, but what I could try is 13 or negative 13. Um, it happens that those do not work. Another thing you could do right now is try the quadratic formula. So if you're, all else fails, you want to test the quadratic formula. Yes, we're trying to find rational zeros, but at the end, if we're trying to graph this, we would also want irrational zeros. So we would try the quadratic formula. Opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times but it looks like it's going to be an imaginary result because it's going to be 16 minus 52 all over 2. So this will create imaginary roots. That will be 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 all over 2. So there are no more real roots left, more well, real zeros left. The only zeros are imaginary. So therefore, we are done with this problem. You have the zeros that you can find by factoring, and you check the quadratic. You always want to check if there's a quadratic left over, like we saw in here. If there's a quadratic left over, we want to make sure that we test it for irrational roots as well. Okay? We don't want imaginary. Those aren't going to be helpful for graphing or for solving real life problems, but the irrational roots will be. They will be in key points to our graph. So hopefully that helps you understand the checkpoints a little bit more. Uh, we will be continuing this section on Monday, so it's not over and we will be reviewing and continuing to learn how to use synthetic division to help us find 
information about polynomials.